What's going on, H2 Army? Justin from H2O Plans, joined with... Kevin Kelly from Brooklyn Hardscape. Jesus, that's right in my ear. <laughs> anyway, today we're going to show you all about this tank, the easiest dry start method, and we're going to also give you some awesome plant-to-tank tips, so stay tuned to check it out. All right, guys, I just want to chime in here real quick. I will also have an unlisted playlist that you can watch uh, some extended play footage of this tank build. So if you want, click the link wherever it's going to be on the screen, and you can check that out after you watch the rest of this video or check it out before or whatever you want to do. So uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. All righty, guys. So me and Kevin are here. We're in front of this 60P, right, or 60U. 60U. It's, uh, what, 24 inches long by... 13... No, it's more than that. So you should have measured that. Well, it's, it's roughly about 14 inches, I think, deep and 14 inches tall. It's a rimless tank. Um, we've been setting up this tank uh, for about the last probably four months yeah. or so. It's been about four months since this tank was originally set up. Um, what happened here is Kevin and our friend Alex, he put together the scape uh, with Alex and this is how it came out. Then Alex then, um, or not Alex, Kevin planted it with a couple different plants to get it ready for this dry start method. And I'm gonna let Kevin talk a little bit about what's going on with the dry start method because this is something that I don't think you've seen before because literally what happened here is you don't have to do anything to the tank, the plants just kind of grow. So, Kevin, talk about this dry start method. Uh, I call this the aeration method. It's a very simple method. Um, when you set it up, this tank's been through a couple of, it's been through a move, it's kind of had some abuse done to it, but uh, normally, uh, what happens is you have a water in here, the water pumps through, aerates into the bottle, and then comes out into the tank, follows all the way to the back, uh, producing uh, moist air into the tank, and then you have the exhaust so you don't have a build up. You have current that'll keep out mold and uh, keeps the tank moist. As you can see inside, it's still got high humidity and uh, Plants normally grow pretty well. If you look along uh, the soil line, everything's looking really good. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, we had uh, some some uh, uh, yeah, dry off over I, here. I think these plants that didn't quite do as well, I think they're just too close to the light and maybe just not enough humidity getting to them. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's, uh, just to go over it, um, there is an air stone in here causing aeration in the water, which is bringing humidified air throughout this system. And that's uh, what's allowing some of these plants, as you can see right here, to grow quite nicely. And also on this other side, one second, let me get over there. Well, I was gonna open it up. So okay, like, like Kevin opened it on up. So um, typically dry store methods are done for how long? Uh, for me, it's it, it all depends. You can get it if you are smart about it and use the right lights and the right times. I mean, no less than 16 hours should the light be on. Uh, sometimes I'll do 18 or 20 hours depending on what I'm growing. Uh, but consistent light, consistent humidity, you can grow out a tank in four weeks to, I've had dry starts going on for almost six months just and because I didn't have time to deal with the tank. Okay, and why would somebody do a dry start method? Uh, there's a couple different reasons. If you want an instantaneous planted tank, you want a tank where you put water in and it's all grown in, less chance of algae, uh, that's the way to do it. Or if you don't have a big budget and you want a really nice tank, you get a couple of plants, spread them out, they'll grow in, and then you have an instantaneous full grown in scape without breaking the bank. Right. Now, not every plant is suitable for this method. No. But, uh, but a good majority are. A good majority are. Most of the taller stem plants don't do well. Um, like I would never use uh, Wallachie or Ernie okay. uh, for a dry start. So those are Rotalas. Rotalas. Uh, high grows, probably same thing. No, a lot of high grows will do fine. They will. Okay. They'll have to convert heavily. Right. Um, you know, so it's it's all about if you keep the humidity above ninety percent, you won't have as much sort of conversion. Right. But you're still going to have some. So it's more for carpeting and uh, some of the lower growing plants. Right. Mosses. Mosses will do really well in a high humidity environment. Gotcha. So um, the, the one thing to point out too, under this environment, these plants are essentially converted to underwater growth. Um, pretty much. close to it. They're, they're, they're like... In a very high humidity environment. Um, I, I do wish it looked a little bit better, like you know, moving it around. Yeah, it, 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 so th this actually, um, I'll, I'll splice in a clip here, but we were actually filming this, uh, what, three weeks ago? Yeah. And we realized the stand that we had previously was actually bowing and cracking. It was actually just a, um, uh, I don't know, like a kitchen kind of uh, thing uh, that you would have to, block. yeah, like a butcher's block kitchen thing on, on wheels. 
I thought it would work, but uh, no, it started bowing the top because it wasn't supported properly. So I actually had my buddy Clark build a whole new stand and you could actually see more of his work over here. But uh, this stand is built to hold this tank specifically and um, and it should not have any bowing issues. It was made uh, quite well. Solid piece of furniture. Yeah, it, it, he makes quality work. Unfortunately, he's moving to Maine, so it really bums me out. <laughs> All right. So as we take everything off here, I'm just going to peel this back. Can't get it. I'll get it. Yeah, you get it. All right, so we went over kind of what it is. Um, other dry start methods don't use the aeration uh, typically, or is that just not a, a well-known tactic using the water bottle? Um, I had a lot of detractors to it. Uh, very rarely have I had anything ever go wrong. Um, obviously moving a tank into it. Yeah. But uh, in general, it's normally a pretty solid method. It's pretty simple. Uh, like you can see here, this is definitely taking some beatings, but I think we also let it go for too long. Yeah, we, we, uh, we're probably a month over where we should be with this. Uh, because like I said, we wanted to fill it about three weeks ago. Uh, we unfortunately couldn't do that because of the stance so that pushed us back and Kevin's been busy. So we haven't had the exact opportunity to do that. Um, but with that said, things still did grow in. This is some red downoy over here, the green stuff. It, this is actually quite rare, this stem and these other stems here are quite rare. Uh, and now Kevin's doing this. But Kevin, before you do that, hold on one oh, second. Sorry. All right, so now Kevin is about to start planting some extra Monte Carlo here because uh, some areas just didn't fill in the way we wanted to. And he's also gonna do some root tabs now. These are experimental root tabs that I'm testing out. But uh, Kevin, why are we putting in root tabs? Well, the uh, Hoga Summon uh, Hellerefi is a nutrient hog. Which is this plant right here. And uh, even though we used aqua soil, it's been a couple months. Aqua soil, you know, you kind of have to start really hitting the roots after about six months a lot of times. But because there's such a little amount of aqua soil, it's only in the corners. Right. So we're just going to give these guys a little boost. So we should touch on that. The substrate here we're using is a carob sea, right? Uh, carob sea golden sunset, I think. Right. So it's just a, a coarse kind of sand. And um, and then it's we're pretty, using pretty nice. Yeah, and then we're using some aqua soil for um, for the back corners here also. Oh shoot! All right, so Kevin's gonna add in some Monte Carlo there. Yeah, we're just throwing in some places. Uh, it dried out, you know, it happens. Uh, luckily, you know, you're a shop, so we can just not wait for it to grow in. We can just kind of. Just jam it in here. Make it happen. But you could see the significant difference here where you can see that the one over there has much tinier leaves than this one. Yeah, it's been growing in such high humidity that it's nearly all the way converted. And um, you can even see here, even better here, that it's much smaller. And really that just comes down to, you know, most aquarium plants are either halfway transitioned or grown completely immersed which is above the water line which they have a completely different form and they're used to breathing the atmosphere opposed to completely submerged plants that are used to being submerged in in water and adapted to that environment so plants will go through this trans uh, transformation from their immersed state to their submerged state in your tank and uh, under high humidity it uh, it does it very well So the idea for this uh, tank is kind of, uh, you know, like a valley type scape and you got the Monte Carlo that's going to hang down over the tops of the rocks here and look very nice. And uh, there's another type of moss growing right here. We're finding all these terrestrial mosses that are actually on the stones. Well, actually, they could be submerged. Uh, yeah, they could have uh, piggyback ride when we pulled stuff out of the tanks or... Well, no, this is all fresh. So I don't know what, why that would be growing there. Yeah, I don't know. Strange. Let's but blame Jake. Yeah, we'll blame Jake on that one. It's all Jake's fault. <laughs> so the reason behind uh, this water bottle technique was to keep the maintenance of this tank down while I was doing the dry start. Uh, virtually, I had to do very little to this tank during its process because the typically with a dry start method, you would mist the plants every day or sometimes multiple times a day 
to keep them wet and uh, not to dry out. But with the water bottle, it creates enough humidity that you don't need to do that. And that's kind of what I was going for because I didn't have the time to really stay on top of it. So I was worried that if I did a dry start method that I would forget to kind of mist it and really have an issue. So Kevin had suggested this way. I think it's worked out pretty good. Um, we did touch on it also keeps down uh, chances of bacteria or uh, fungal um, breakouts. Now early on I did find that there was two slight breakouts but I was able to catch them before they spread and I removed just the leaves and re-taped up everything. And it's important to keep the lids sealed or, or you know put plastic wrap to make sure you lock in that humidity. Uh, you got to keep the pressure up. That's like uh, one of the hardest things to remember. If you notice the pressure dropping, yeah. Um, uh, the cellophane uh, should be a little bubble, and if the pressure drops, that means somewhere there's a leak. And if you have a leak, that's kind of when it goes sideways. Uh, when I do it for myself, I actually normally use like a plexiglass piece of plexiglass instead of a uh, cellophane. That's actually not a bad idea. Why didn't we do that, Kevin? I don't know. It's all your fault. It is my fault. I blame you. We're almost done though, so. We are. We're, we're, we're at the finish line. We're about to go uh, grab the python and start filling this bad boy up. Any tips for uh, doing this kind of dry start though? Would, would you recommend for anybody? Like anything that they should know that we haven't mentioned? Um, really, it's just all about keeping the humidity and the air pressure up. Uh, everything else is self-sustaining. Uh, it's almost like keeping a terrarium. Do you have to spray it with fertilizer? I don't, I don't ever do that. Uh, but I also don't do a lot of sand in my scapes in general. Um, for this one, maybe that could have been one of the things we should have done was uh, sprayed some fertilizer on the stone. Right. Uh, but again, this is Oco stone. It's uh, semi-fossilized clay. Uh, should have been okay. Right. For the most part, the plants did rather well. Um, but we did use uh, this sand. This is something that we've touched on with Kevin in, in uh, previous live streams that we've done with him. Um, but we're using a sand that is similar to the rocks because the sand will kind of create the effect that the sand is there from the rocks that it degraded from, from it because the colors match. It's one of the nicer things. Uh, it's a lot a, of people, time, people talk about making things look natural and this is really, this is natural. Yeah, it's like a small detail that I feel is overlooked because everybody's like, oh, well, let's use aqua soil, but then they just have a black round substrate and don't, you know. My feelings on aqua soil are, if you're gonna use aqua soil, then it needs to be covered. I don't like seeing soil. Right. So if you have areas where you know for a fact they're not gonna be plants growing, then, uh, then there's no reason to have aqua soil there. Uh, some people use it as a buffer. It's not, not something I'm into. So the last thing we have to do is, was the Wallachie that we were doing? Or? Uh, yeah, uh, Wallachie. I don't really have a much Ernie. We could do a couple stems, but it wouldn't be enough to fill it in. We just need five stems. Five stems? All right, let's go take a look. One second. All right, so we got some Wallachie, Rotella Wallachie. That uh, pretty much is the only stem plant that I have enough to kind of do this with that has really fine leaves. And uh, you'll see it once we fill it up, how, how fine the leaves are. They're, they're very narrow. And Kevin, why wouldn't these, uh, these particular plants do well in this dry start method the whole, like, from the beginning? Uh, their structure is just too delicate. Um, even now you can see the, they're kind of in flow. Uh, they're taking a little bit of a beating. These will be good plants to, you know, this will rehab them back and it should grow pretty fast. Yeah, Rotalas are one of those that just kind of set them and forget them. They'll just yeah. quickly take over. They do rather well. There's so many different kinds and varieties too, which is nice to have that. Oh, so here's a uh, thing that I actually want to make a separate video about, but it's about planting stems the way Kevin's doing this. So. Kevin is uh, spacing these stems out. Typically, a lot of people, they'll just take a bunch and just stick it in one spot. No, you don't want to do that, you'll get root rot. Yeah, not ideal, because then you have the plants out trying to outcompete each other also, and that's what um, 
basically happens when you lose a lot of the bottom leaves to plants is you have them too close together there's not enough light getting down and you're probably not trimming them enough and they're being shaded by themselves so by spacing these stems out as he plants them it allows them to each establish their own root system and establish the it allows them to kind of grow out side shoots and pretty much be able to be on their own without being bunched and uh, you know be suffocated by each other but it's uh, far too common that I see people just taking bunches of plants and just jamming them in. Just jamming them in. You definitely, when it comes to stems, you want to spread them out. Yes, this isn't uh, the high school prom. <laughs> Sorry, got that that one out. <laughs> Bad jokes. <laughs> So this tank will have CO2 on it. Uh, we're actually just not going to set up CO2 tonight because I'm missing a part, but I'm going to go tomorrow, grab the part, and it should be fine. Uh, I'm not worried about these, uh, these plants dying or having any uh, significant impact once we do. But once we flood the tank, now we have to adjust the light, right? Yes, we'll start with six hours. So we're going to go from, I believe it was set to 18 hours a day. Now it's going to go down to six hours. And the reason for that is the usual amount of light that you want on your aquarium is anywhere between six and eight hours, uh, typically. If it's a really mature tank and you've got everything balanced, you can take it up to 10. Uh, I have a low-tech tank that I have for 10 hours. Right for now. 10 hours? But it's got a stingray on it. Okay. Like so it also has to do with the intensity of light. This does have a uh, twin star light on it, which is a very powerful light. Uh, probably one of, I would say probably the top three light brands that you could get at the moment. And uh, it could quickly turn into an algae fest if we're not careful. Yeah. <laughs> so when you get the CO2 going, you're going to have to really blast it. But because of the way this is, you're not going to need a whole lot of CO2 in the end. Uh, there's not a lot of plants in here. There won't ever be a lot of plants. So should be okay yeah this tank is more about the hardscape it's one thing that i don't have down here and we don't really have a, a show tank of uh hardscapes we do have kevin's other tank that he's done the peng Zhang, uh but that i wouldn't consider a uh aquascape really that's more of an art piece than anything <laughs> really when it comes down to it and i wanted a, a a tank that somebody else could replicate at home and i feel like this is for the most part replicatable um to some degree uh, because you're not th none of this is glued together this is all just kind of position stones are stacked up top of each other and arranged accordingly so this is something that anybody can do by picking up 20 pounds of dragon stone and dumping it in, an, in a tank essentially and that's uh that's really what this tank comes down to so this is what it looks like we're going to set up the python start filling it up get the filter going and we'll be back with you once it's filled the mustard weight yeah <laughs> so here is the tank after being filled I'm currently waiting for kevin to finish the filter we're using a fluval 206 which is this little one right there and that will be filtering this tank hopefully it should be enough you can see here we got a bunch of uh, debris and surface uh, film that's forming here. It's all the stuff that's coming off the Dragonstone. Uh, typically you want to wash Dragonstone before you put it in a tank just because there's a bunch of clay deposits on it and you want to rinse all that off. We didn't do that beforehand so. I told you to. Yeah you told me to but <laughs> now we have the power washer now we can do it in the future but uh, so yeah so we didn't wash the Dragonstone so it may be a little cloudy for a couple days but as soon as Kevin gets the filter running we will uh, try him back in and see how it's doing all right so tank has been filled filter is set up this is the scape currently it does need to clear up it's going to take about a day or two which we will put some footage at the very end of the video showing what it looks like once it all, has all cleared up but Kevin and I wanted to recap a couple of things. So we did an aeration method or a dry start method with an aerator that basically pumps in humidified air, creating a uh, humid environment for the plants to grow. This allows the plants to be essentially 90 to 100% already converted into its submerged state, going from submerged to immersed, which allows it to have a lot less melt off once it's flooded. Now it will, of course, melt some plants uh, as tanks adjust, uh, as the plants adjust to the new environment with it being flooded. 
A uh, couple things to note though that the dry start method does not allow the tank to cycle. It is still treated as a new tank. We do have to allow the filter to set up, not adding anything into it because there's a no livestock plans for this tank. It is a 20 gallon tank. You could essentially put a lot of different things in here, which I would love it if you guys left a comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see us put in it. But Kevin, do you have any recapping statements? Uh, of course, you know, pointing out that the tank is not cycled is absolutely important. Uh, you have a lot, of, especially with this particular one, because it was moved and some of the plants are dried out and they're gonna have to bounce back. Uh, you're gonna have a lot of ups and downs that are going on in the tank, a lot of ammonia uh, buildup. The cycling process is going to take the normal amount of time or a little bit more. Uh, thinking that because it's ADA soil that it'll buffer and cycle faster. There's only a little bit of uh, soil in here and it's not enough to like jumpstart the process. Uh, you're gonna have to do a bunch of water changes and just wait it out the normal time. Um, I'd say four to five, maybe even six weeks before this is really ready to start filling it up with fish, but once you can, maybe a nice lovely school of micro sporas or shrimp would be really great. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, obviously we're having a little bit of some scum that build up. Uh, it happens with a terrarium. So this is basically what it was. It was a terrarium that we grew up and we're now making it into an aquarium. Um, uh, well, I just want to also point out, this is an extremely easy process to go through. Uh, literally, I did nothing to this tank, like I stated earlier. Um, so if anybody out there wanted to essentially do an aquascape and grow out stuff, I highly recommend this method with the aeration. Um, it eliminated any of the hard work. Just look out in case there's any fungus that does develop, remove the plants accordingly. Um, also, this tank I wanted to touch on because it's a common question. Everybody always asks what size tank should I get for my, my tank that I'm gonna do. And if you're passionate about aquascaping and wanting to try your hand in aquascaping, and aquascaping is different than just having a planted tank with fish in it as Kevin makes a mess. Um, Rimless tanks are beautiful to do aquascapes in, and also you don't have to get such a huge tank. This is a 20 gallon tank, but Kevin has created beautiful art pieces in just, you know, 10 gallons, five gallons, three gallons. Three gallons. So um, definitely, if you're just in it to aquascape and have some fun with growing out some plants, and you're not too concerned about what, what the livestock is, uh, go with a smaller tank. It's gonna save you money. In the long run, you don't need as much uh, soil. You don't need a, a really fancy light. You don't need, a, over, you know, to over filter or anything like that. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Definitely try your hand at this. It's pretty easy to do. And if I could do it, I'm sure most of you can. So with a little help from Kevin. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out Kevin. His links are in the description on Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, all that good stuff. Uh, also, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. I know a lot of people were waiting for this. And uh, subscribe and hit the notification bell here if you're new. And uh, we'll see you later.